go into my Chrome and I'm just going to Google knee pain. And like this is already the problem because as you know in Google, as soon as you start typing, it actually starts bringing up what everybody else in the world is saying. And so this is the big problem. Googling and research is great for a lot of things, but diagnosis is not one of them. And knee pain diagnosis is literally one of the first things that comes up. So we're not going to do that. We're going to just click on knee pain and hope that that's where most people do look at stuff. And we're going to go immediately. And these are the things that start coming up. ZocDoc, which would be an ad. That's an ad, guys, by the way, if you don't know that. Most of the first top word people are not things that are necessarily coming up in your search, but they're coming up in a paid ad. That's a big deal that you should kind of pay attention to in this case. We are talking about your body, so you want to make sure you're looking at the right things. Um, and so sprained knee, ACL injury, the, these are things that are kind of, this ACL injury is extreme, which you more than likely don't have. Because um, if you had anything wrong with your ACL, you wouldn't be sitting down and Googling, you'd be in pain somewhere. Um, and then there's all the images that people can look at, but we're just going to scroll down. And then obviously we all know what this is. These are the top things that people ask and Google likes to put them together. And so these are the most common stuff. Um, and what causes knee pain without injury? Bursitis, tendonitis, baker cyst, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. These are so grossly different. And I don't believe for one second that these are the things that are actually being searched at all. I don't believe that because I know these are so crazily different. Like this is this rheumatoid arthritis is like a real actual disease. That's not something that you just get out of nowhere. It's not an injury. Um, bursitis is from an injury. Tendonitis is an injury. Baker cyst is from an injury and a dysfunction. So like these are things that no one kind of really understands. Um, and then this is inflammation, bursitis is infl inflammation and patella tendon and cartilage. And then you guys start really, soon, the more you click on, the more you see. And like, this is the problem. And here's the bigger, this is the big kicker. This is, do you have a torn meniscus in your knee? Or popping sensation, swelling or stiffness, pain, especially when twisting or rotating your knee, difficulty straightening your knee fully, and feeling as though your knee is locked when, um, when it's in place. Here's the funny part. Every single one of these is what an IT band problem feels like. So torn meniscus and meniscus problems is a huge money maker. It's probably one of the top knee surgeries in this country. Um, and I say probably just because I'm being politically correct because I actually know it's the top surgery for knee pain in this country. Um, outside this country, I would probably go ahead and say the same thing, but I'll keep it to this country. And a lot of the times you don't need surgery with meniscus. There's grades one, two, three, four, four being the worst, one being basically nothing. And the, the body has an exceptional ability to heal itself. So all of this actually feels like when your IT band is restricting your knee flexion. So you feel like you have a rubber band or something tight around your knee. That's the IT band actually pulling on the outside of the knee. Difficulty straightening your knee fully. That's because you have no knee extension, which is hamstring extension, which is from up above at the glute area where the IT band is the thickest. And then it's along that entire area from the hip to the knee. So that would be a reason why that's happening. Pain, especially when twisting or rotating your knee. Well, when your body knows that you don't have the ability to do something, it's going to give you pain. So you stop doing it. So if you don't, if your IT band is restricting your hip and knee mobility, it's not going to like you twisting or rotating your knee. So that would give you pain. That's an idea that there's something there. Stiffness and swelling is a sign that your body is in protection mode. The blood is accumulated there because it feels it's an injury, and therefore that creates stiffness because there's a lot of blood in that area, which is when you would start foam rolling, releasing the blood out of the area, get mobility back to the knee with that blood flow, but not the accumulation of blood flow. Because you need blood flow, guys, so you don't want to stop the swelling, but you want to make it moving blood, not blood that's just sitting there, and then a popping sensation. So you have tendons and ligaments and bones and joints, right? So every one of those things make different sounds. Um, snapping, like a snapping is usually a ligament 
trying to get into a position that it's not in and you have three major ones in your knee, ACL, MCL, and LCL. Popping sensation could be a tendon. It could be tissue rolling over all the bones and joints in that area. So again, that could be IT band. So when you look at these things, and if you know when you Google even WebMD and you're like, red uh, fever and like it comes up like you have meningitis like the craziest stuff you have to apply that to this stuff also guys so don't google stuff and think that oh because i have all of these symptoms that means i've torn my meniscus that's not actually the case um here's another fun one damage in the cartilage of your knee it's actually scientifically proven that running regenerates cartilage in your knee, literally, as recent as a study done in the London Marathon of 2019. They took MRIs of, you can find this in the New York Times, there's an article written by the New York Times. They did MRIs of, I believe, 20 people who ran the London Marathon. They did MRIs pre-race and post-race. And all the funkiness in everybody's knees pre-race was gone post-race via MRI. So, and that's, I can date that back to 2011, 2010, 2009, where back doctors in the UK were actually prescribing running to their back patients instead of surgery because of what running actually does in the generation of blood flow um, to your spine and hips, the most important joints in the body. And I have runners who have, quote, been told they have zero cartilage in either knee and run over 30 races a year, completely pain-free. So when I see this come up as symptoms of cartilage damage, um, especially for a runner, again, remember we're talking about people who are active. These these things you're following up, you're looking up here, are really going to be very, very um, general. This is not even run specific. So a runner, it would be really hard for a runner to have cartilage issues or damage to their cartilage, if you will, because the running itself generates the cartilage in their knee, literally. Um, and I, I, I have medical journals that prove that because that's what I research with, with, um, with what I do for a living, but you can actually Google that because the New York Times is, you can actually Google that, that article. So, and then here we go, arthritis. If you listen to anything with my podcasts or come to the events with Run Pain Free and what have you, you know that arthritis really actually means it's an immobility or an improper mobility of a joint. So if you move properly, there's no itis. So again, this is very heavily being generalized to people who sit down all day. So somebody who sits down all day, they could have a cartilage issue, and if they got up and started walking every day, that actually would go away. On top of that, walking alone every day would actually get rid of arthritis, arthritis pain arthritic pain because when you're not moving you're not generating blood flow and if there's no blood flow to your joints they're going to get rickety it's really that simple so googling itself actually really starts to scare the hell out of you because it's almost like an understood an understood notion that if it's online it's terrible that means you need like surgery you mean you need a doctor um and like Sometimes they'll be nice and may leave a thing like, can you heal without surgery? And they'll actually be correct about it. But see how this is 2019? Because people, some people are progressive and some people actually post certain things on here. Um, this is also a physio, which is more along the lines of what we do here. So again, they know better. <laughs> um, so again, like you see what I'm looking at? I'm looking at who's posting it, where is it coming from? And people who are going to say that it's healable, that you don't need surgery is not going to be a doctor. It's not going to be a doctor. Doctors do amazing things. They really do amazing things. When you need surgery, obviously that's the that's their thing if they do. But not everything needs surgery. And surgery even still doesn't correct why you got hurt in the first place, why you have pain in the first place. So that's why there's, there's a thing called pre-op and post-op. I'm sure you've heard of that. There's a reason. Because you have to prep the body for surgery and then you have to take care of the body post-surgery. So I have a plethora of people who I've seen pre and post-op of shoulder replacement, hip replacement, knee replacements. And um, it's because I, you know, we, we fix everybody here. So the point is the better, the more you're prepped for your surgery, 
the faster you're going to heal, the less scar tissue is going to develop, and the easier we'll be able to get to the reason why you got hurt in the first place. A lot of the times I get people who are en route to a replacement and I'm able to reverse that because I get to the root. So a lot of the times you won't see doctors in here being like, yeah, it'll go away. You'll be fine. Um, it'll, it'll be a physio. It'll be a biomechanics person. It'll be someone of that nature. Not It won't be a doctor. Um, and then here we go. Do knee braces help torn meniscus? If you really want an injury, get a knee brace. I'll say it again. If you really want an injury, get a knee brace because that's what this is going to do. And so these are what you're going to actually find. And I haven't even like really clicked and dug onto anything yet. Like literally. I don't I'm afraid to look at this. Oh, Lord. So here's another problem. The torn meniscus. And it says, what are the best exercises for torn meniscus? Quad sets. Here's the one thing you don't want to do if you have any knee pain. Build your quads. <laughs> That's the what? Straight leg front, straight leg raised front and back. You would never hamstring, not one of these things, Lord Jesus, not one of these things have I ever allowed any of my clients to do in 20 years. Would I ever put them into, and I actually get, I actually lose my mind if I've heard somebody's done any of these. This will injure you immediately. This one will injure you immediately. This is the problem to begin with. Your quads are too big. They're not, they're out of balance from quad to hamstring, quad to glute. All you're using is your quad and all that weight is on your kneecap. That's part of the problem. The more you build your quad, the more you pull on the patella tendon. The patella tendon, I'll just go up here. This is the patella tendon. So it actually, it actually connects. It actually connects. That This is your quad up over your kneecap and then into your tibia, your shin. So it actually connects that. So the more you build these muscles, the more this pulls. The more this pulls, it pulls all of this. So now guess what can't move? Your knee. Hi. And this is what? IT band right here. <laughs> so like that's why you don't want to do these things. That's why. Um, but we're going to move on from knee pain because I could do this for hours. You know that. I totally can show you this all day long. All right. So now we're going to actually clear knee pain. And we're going to go to, oh, here we go. All I did was write plant. Plantar fasciitis, plantar pain, plantar, plantarius muscle, plantar flexion, which is really the problem. But we're just going to go plantar fasciitis. Oh, images. Okay. Let's go to all. Okay. Um, very common. It is. It's the number one injury for all runners in this country. But it's also the most common for sedentary people. Um, so that's very, very self-treatable. Great. Good job. Good job, Mayo Clinic. Very good. Um, how long does it take to go away? Six to 18 months. That's incorrect. That's not true. But I get it. Again, generalizing, generalizing. So now on this one, we're actually going to go for runners. Plantar fasciitis for runners. See? Okay. So now let's see if we get uh, much different. Now we get all the braces. Here we go. If you have this, throw it out. Do not get a sock. This is a problem. If this is all tight under here. So why would you want to pull this? Pull it. You already don't have ankle flexion. That's why you have a problem to begin with, which is what we are going to, that's what, that's what, that's what we do here at Run Pain Free Academy. Um, so let's see. Can I keep, kept, can I keep running with plantar fasciitis? Um, if your pain is severe, it's best to start by resting. Worst thing to do. What happens when you rest? If, again, if you've been listening to Run Pain Free for a while, you know that resting just makes things worse and gives you the illusion that it's not a problem because you're not doing it. So what feedback do you have if you're still doing it, right? You have no feedback. I mean, if you're, if you're not doing it, you need feedback. You need to do it. You need to see where your body is moving, adjusting, feeling, and all that stuff. So that's what you need to do. Um, so possibly safety to enjoy running. Uh, it's possible. It's more than possible. So let's see. Fastest way to cure a plantar fat. Freeze a water filled cup. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Red flag alert, alert. Close down Google. Literally stop this. What are we understanding? What does freezing do? It freezes things, right? Ice freezes. 
So if you have lack of blood flow and you step on a cold, frozen bottle of water, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to freeze your foot. So you already have a lack of blood flow to your foot. Why? Because the Achilles tendon has the least amount of blood supply out of all tendons in the body. And that's what's really pulling on the back of your heel that actually pulls your plantar fascia underneath the bottom of your foot. So you already have a lack of blood supply there, which is why you're in pain. Because you don't have much blood there and you're using your feet for hours on end to run, to flex and point and flex and point. And you don't have that ability because your ankles are not flexing and extending. So then your foot gets locked up. And then you're in a stability sneaker, which makes this even more profound. So when you step on an actual ice cold water bottle, you're literally make you're solidifying your injury. You're not making it worse. You're solidifying your injury. You're actually making it to a point that would actually send you right to the doctor because you won't be able to deal with the pain there after this. Once somebody does this, the pain goes bananas, straight up. You may be numb for a minute, but that comes right out. And you see, plantar fat, Achilles tendon and calf muscles. So the Achilles tendon is the tendon of your hamstrings that actually insert into your heel because tendons attach muscle to bone. So the hamstrings come down as muscles go into your calf and form your Achilles tendon to attach to the bone below. That's why when you have any Achilles pain and ankle pain and heel pain, it's really coming from the muscular part of your hamstring. Um, so, and then the joint that's affected obviously is your ankle and hip. So again, the fastest way to create worse plantar fasciitis is what this should say, would be to put your foot on a frozen bottle of water. Let's continue because I could go on. This, I'm going to, I can already feel myself getting annoyed. Now we're going to go to YouTube. We're going to go to YouTube. Let's just go. Let's go to YouTube and see what they're doing over here for a KT tape. If this ever actually works. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. All right, so let's do KT tape. Let's do, okay, we'll just, oh, we're not subscribing. We're just going to click on it. KT tape for runners. Ah, look at this. Runner's knee for runners. Runner's knee pain for running. Let's just do for runners, okay? What is this? So, guess what KT tape is trying to mimic, everybody? Any kind of tape like this, kinesiology tape. Look, here's a perfect depiction of what it's trying to... What does this tape look like right here? What does that look like? Your IT band. That's what it's trying to mimic. So, every place you see them putting IT band, it's literally trying to go along the lines of your fascia pattern. And that's why it's so important that you foam roll. Because when you foam roll, you don't need any of this. But more importantly, this actually creates injuries. Why? Because this is actually giving the illusion that something is sitting on there and it's um, basically acting like someone's hand. Look at this, Lord. This is like someone's hand is basically holding and grabbing and holding there while you run. That's unrealistic. No one's, you're, you're ne unless you're planning on living with KT tape on this part of your body for the rest of your life, literally every day, all day, no matter what you're doing, then go ahead and use it. But if you're not planning on living with KT tape every day, all day for the rest of your life, then you need to stop using it because what it's doing is, is giving the illusion that there's something here, there's a fascia pattern here that's actually functional. Well, it actually isn't. That's why you're putting that tape there. This girl needs to foam roll, okay? This is the entire line where that bone, where this dot is where the IT band starts to insert into this bone right here. So if she actually didn't, if she actually foam rolled all of this, this pain would stop and blood flow would be released to her knee. And this is the actual bone that the fascia actually goes into. And so all of this muscle gets really restricted. And this is the power for push off ankle flexion. So by using this, it's giving the illusion that this part of the tissue is fine when it's not. But because she's going to use about a, how, let's see how big of a strip. Oh, we're cutting it. A very little strip. 
So the fascia literally is all over the body. And this actual piece of fascia comes from here all the way up, gets very wide over the glute, goes over her glute, across her back, and attaches on her other shoulder over here. So if we put a little piece of tape right here, we're jacking up this hip, back, T-spine, and shoulder. And then we're saying this whole other side has to overwork now because something over here is not normal, not, not right, and it's giving an illusion. So as soon as she rips this tape off, this hip's going to be killing her, straight up. And anybody who, who you know who has used this tape will probably tell you that when they're done using it, they have pain in other places. So they actually don't think that this is the issue. They don't think that that's an issue because this is where they're putting the tape and this is the pain. So when they take off the pain, this is how delusional people get. They use the tape here, and even though they feel pain in their hip when they're done, they actually don't realize that it's because they use tape here and not have many it's not, it, the hip is only responding to what they did to themselves here. So that's why this tape creates injuries. There's a reason why the federal government took KT tape to court several years ago and won for um, false advertisement of fixing injuries. There's a reason. And you can Google that. That's Googleable. Um, so this is what we, this is the issue. And this is what people look at when they go online. This is what they see. And they're like, oh, well, if they're using it, then... I should be able to, I should be using it too. And shin splints. Okay, here we go. So shin splints are literally the gateway to plantar fasciitis. So if you put restriction, which is tape, on your on 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 your shin, you're locking up your ankle and knee flexion and ankle is hip. So if you do anything to mess up this muscle that is actually extending every time you push off when your ankle points, this is supposed to extend. But now this is not gonna allow that to happen. And now it's going all the way up top and this is where the IT band is, so now we're already jacking up the knee. We're already messing with the knee here. And so again, trying to align this with fascia, that's what it's trying to do. And the, no, it doesn't do that. This is an illusion, this is fake, this is Causing injuries, this is giving the body a false pretense that something is there that's actually not there, which is a functional piece of tissue. Tissue dictates joint, joint dictates muscle, guys. So if you're giving an illusion, like basically this is like me saying, hey, I'm going to grab my hands around your shin and you can run this, this marathon. I'll, 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 I'm going to hang out down here with my hands, grab around it, pull up on this and uh, make you think that you're okay. So you can run. And as soon as I let my hands go, this gets worse, which is why you have to roll all of this. Every Anybody, I've come in and I'll put my fingers right around here and I press up. Immediately, this area feels better. Immediately, the shin feels better. Immediately. Because this is what the problem is. There's tissue very bunched up down here. And now this genius just put tape on this area that's bunched up tissue. Because if you've ever seen, there's there sometimes is a little bump of tissue. It's a bump down here. And people are like, I don't know, um, why is it swollen here? Because it's bunched up tissue. You have to actually stick and roll this. And this is the things we go over because this is what's not, you're not going to find this here. At what point are we going to see how to stick, how to roll this area? No, we have stretches here. This is a stretch. Stretching is not doing anything when you have tissue that's, that's jacked up. That's tissue that's jacked up. And you can't manipulate this either because then you're just going to make the tissue even more mad. You have to give it love. It has to be rolled, pressed, and given an instance where it feels more pliable from joint to joint. So from, from the knee, from the base of the knee, where am I? Look, here's a good picture. From the base of the knee down, all of that has to feel good. All of this has to feel pliable. If anything on here tissue-wise is bunched up, I don't care what the hell you put on here. It's not going to let your body work. You're actually just making your body real angry. You're real, like it's like literally like you're poking at the body, like you're poking a bear. That's what tape does. That's a good one. The tape pokes a bear. You want to poke a bear? Have fun. 